Welcome to another show, I'm Sid, and in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how to create this very simple carousel effect for your filters on Instagram and Facebook using Spark AR Studio. As you can see right now, I have this two camera setup, which is creating an infinite scrolling effect moving horizontally across the screen. But if I tap here, then you'll see I also have it set up to move vertically downwards, which is pretty sweet. It reminds me of a film roll effect a little bit, which I think is kind of cool. I've also added this border here, which is a template available from the link in the description. My Gumroad template package is uh, live now, so feel free to check that out. The lowest tier is three pounds, and it includes a number of frames with multiple camera configurations, uh, two by two grid, three by three grid, different thicknesses, all kinds of cool stuff. So feel free to check that out if you're interested. And I've also added some basic patch interactions here. Uh, for the duotone patch and the color cycles one here just to show you uh, a couple of ways that you can spice it up Give it that unique look for your own filters with that being said uh, if you enjoy the content Don't forget to hit like subscribe leave a comment all that good stuff because it means a lot It helps the channel grow and I appreciate your support uh, And yeah, let's pause this and I'll create a new project show you exactly what I've done to make this effect Let's do it. Okay, so the first thing we need to do, as always, is set up our scene, which means coming down to here and adding a rectangle that will appear nested inside of this canvas. I'm going to rename this horizontal because I'm going to show you both the horizontal and vertical ways. Uh, and then I'm going to rename this rectangle here camera one, duplicate it so that we have two cameras, duplicate it again. I'm going to rename the camera three to frame one. And then I'm going to duplicate the frame. So now I have two cameras and two frames. Okay, so now I've got all that set up. I'm going to duplicate this entire canvas. Uh, and I'm going to rename it from horizontal to vertical. So now I have the exact same setup duplicated twice. And it was pretty simple, huh? Next thing I'm going to do is take this white frame template and drag it into my assets panel. The link to this is in the description below. It's available as part of the template package that I've created on Gumroad. Feel free to check it out. Although it is an optional extra, it does, in my opinion, give some filters a little bit of a, a more aesthetic look. So what I'm gonna do is come up here now, highlight all of these, and we're gonna make them fill height and fill width. Now what we're gonna do is highlight our cameras on both, and we're gonna add a new material for them. I'm gonna rename that camera. Then come up to our actual camera in the scene and add a texture extraction. Come back to our material, switch the shader type over to flat, and add our camera texture here. Still can't see us, but that's because of the frames. So now we're gonna control select all of our frames as well. Add a material for those, create a new material, rename it to frame, change the shader type to flat, same as before. And this time, instead of the diffuse texture, I'm gonna add the alpha, I'm gonna check that box, and I'm gonna add my white frame here instead. So it creates a very similar effect, but as you can see, uh, it's now in the alpha channel, which means that I can add patches to it and not have to worry about them getting messed up too badly but in the meantime just so you can see it more clearly i'll make it black i don't know why that got so big so here we go that's pretty much it uh i have all of our setup basically done and now i want to add our patch interactions so i'll open up our patch editor move this out of the way just a little bit and let's get started down here okay so the first thing i'm going to do is double tap on the patch editor and i'm going to add a screen tap that will be the start of our interaction here and from tap the output here, I'm gonna drag and I'm gonna add a loop animation. That will automatically add this switch in the middle so you don't have to worry about that. Although you can just type it in and add one manually. Next, we're gonna drag out from progress and I'm gonna add a transition here. Now by default, it's set at vector three, but because we're gonna be adjusting the position, which over here, as you can see, is a two vector uh, transformation, we're gonna change this down here from vector three to vector two. Now I'm gonna control select and copy it so that we have two of those coming out of the same loop animation. Now what I want to do is come up here. It doesn't matter which one of these canvases you start with, but all of the objects inside of it, you want to control select your cameras and your frames and make positions for both of them, uh, patches, sorry, for both of them inside of your patch editor. Then you want to separate them out so that you have camera one and frame one at the top and camera two and frame two at the bottom. And then you can connect those up. All of them here. Lovely. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do now is make this vertical canvas invisible because we're not using it right now and it's easier to work with the layer underneath if we make it invisible, so I'm gonna do that. As you can see, we do actually have the loop animation set up right. It is working, but not quite in the way that we want. Right now, our start positions on the X and Y axis are zero, zero, and our end positions are one, one. Now we're using screen coordinates for this, which means that zero, zero is up here in the top left and the very bottom right 
is whatever the dimensions of your screen actually are. So in this case, it's 375 by 667. Uh, you can round those up. Uh, I'm not exactly sure why they're at those dimensions right now, but yeah, 375 by 667 for the iPhone 8. It does scale depending on the phone that you're using, uh, so it doesn't actually matter, but you can see all the dimensions here. So once you select your device, just do it based on that and it will adjust automatically. Uh, if I change this value here from zero to, uh, uh, we'll leave our start position at zero, sorry, on the X and on the Y. I'm gonna change the Y position here to zero at the end as well, because we don't want it to go up or down. We just want it to go left and right. And then on this one, I'm gonna change it to be the maximum width of the screen so that it moves all the way across from zero to 375. So now you can see that that's happening, which is pretty sweet, uh, but it's going a bit fast. So under the loop animation settings, I'm gonna change the duration here from one second to five seconds, which will slow it down a little bit. And now I'm gonna do the exact same thing for the second camera and frame, except I'm gonna be starting at minus 375. So it begins just to the left off screen and I'm gonna have it end at zero. I'm also gonna end at zero on the Y so that it doesn't go up or down here either. Uh, and as you can see, we already have created this perfect carousel effect. If I switch over to the 2D position, then you'll see it a little bit more clearly. The way it's working is that the, they're, both very, they're both sat next to each other. One begins at zero, zero inside of the frame and then moves to the right until it's out of frame. And this other one moves off camera until it fills the frame where the first one previously was. The loop animation keeps that cycle going indefinitely and you can adjust the speed of it to be whatever you want. So if you want to speed it up, go to 2.5, for example, or you could slow it down and make it last as long as an Instagram story. But this is up to you. You could speed it up as fast as you want. You could make it insane, but we won't do that because it's jarring. 2.5 seems pretty reasonable, so we'll leave it there. And just to be clear, you can add as many of these as you want. So if you added 15 cameras, you could have them all linked together, moving from left to right in a cycle. You could add different patches to each one. You could add different animation sequences to each one. And you could create this very complicated effect using this technique uh, in a kind of carousel zoeotrope kind of way, which uh, I think is really interesting. It's definitely something to play around with. But what I'm going to show you to how to do now is to do the vertical version and also to add a uh, tap to change interaction so that we can tap between our vertical and horizontal um, carousels. So what we're gonna do is between the screen tap, we're gonna drag out here and add a counter. And then from the count, we're gonna add our equals exactly. It's exactly the same as every other video I make because I clearly don't know anything else about this program. We can get rid of this switch now because we don't need it. Uh, and then what I'm gonna do is connect this loop animation up to our first equals exactly set at zero, then I'm gonna change this one to one because we have two choices. And then I'm gonna change this maximum count here to two because we have two choices. <laughs> uh, so now we've got rid of the switch, we can replace that, put that in there. I'll drag that down to give it a little bit more space. And what I'm gonna do is take this horizontal canvas and I'm gonna make a visibility patch here and connect that up as well. So now when, oh, sorry, from here, <laughs> connect that up to there. So now whenever we tap, we will alternate between visible layer and not visible layer, which is pretty sweet, right? So now we can make this vertical layer visible again and the frame comes back and we can do exactly the same interaction for this except going vertically. So we'll copy that, duplicate it, unconnect, disconnect it from that and reconnect it to this new one. Everything's pretty much the same right now. So if I take these, highlight them from the vertical canvas and add those positions in the same way as I did before. We've got frame two there, frame one there, camera two and camera one. Get those connected. There you can see the effect is right now exactly the same. So they're sat on top of each other doing the same thing. I'm gonna set these back to zero and set that back to zero because we wanna keep those where they are. And this time what we're gonna do is make this number 667 on the end. So now it's already moving down exactly as we want. And I'm gonna make this one minus 667. So it starts at the top, uh, out just off a of frame and then moves down into position where the previous one was. This effect is identical to the other way. Uh, and as you can see, it looks pretty sweet. And the same as the horizontal, you can have this infinitely loop with as many cameras as you like, as many different interactions as you like. Right now, the cameras are all using the same material, regardless of whether on the horizontal or the vertical canvas. But if I rename this, to a uh, camera horizontal and then duplicate it. I can rename 
that one to camera vertical. And now if I come under this selection, I can change the material layer from camera horizontal to camera vertical. And now I can add patches separately for each of these that will create different effects when you tap to change. I should also, before I forget, come back up here to the vertical canvas and make a visibility patch for that so that we can connect it up same way as we did for our horizontal one. Uh, because as you can see right now in the preview window, both layers are visible, but when I connect it up, it's just the uh, horizontal and now it's just the uh, vertical, which is what we want. Uh, so now let's come into the library under patch assets and we'll add a couple of shader types. Uh, I used Duotone for the preview at the start, so I'll add that one. And I'll also want the color cycles patch so that we can change the color of the frame. I'm not exactly sure what that one is though, so let's have a little look. <laughs> color cycle. There we go. So we'll add both of those and they should appear in our assets panel. So now if I make a little space in our patch graph, then we can drag our color cycle patch in here. And I'm going to start out with the frame. So our diffuse texture here for our frame, we're going to create a patch for that and get that connected up. As you can see, it does absolutely nothing. That's because the color here is set to black. So if we change that now to white, then you'll immediately see the difference. You can use any color in between black and white, but it will reduce the color spectrum that you see in the final result. White just gives you the widest color variety. Uh, I also like to change the duration to a little bit longer and give it a random start just so that it uh, looks different every time you start the filter. So that's that. Both of those are now uh, set up because we're using the same frame texture for both uh, canvases. And now we can do the same for our two cameras. So if I drag this out of the way a little bit, we can drag our duotone shader in here. And what I'm going to do, because I'm only using this one patch, I'm going to duplicate it. Although you can use any patches you like for this effect. And now what I'm going to do is take both of these textures, the diffuse textures, create patches for them in here. One for the vertical, one for the horizontal. Get those connected up like so. As you can see, nothing's happening right now. And in fact, it's actually making the filter worse by completely covering the camera texture with this blue screen. There's not even any purple in there right now. So what we're going to do is drag our camera texture in here connect from the RGBA output to the, to the texture uh, inputs of our duotone shaders. And now you can see the effect is working just fine. You can tap through. And right now the colors are set to be the same. So when you tap through, it looks exactly the same, but we can adjust that. We could change this to like a darker green. Uh, we could change this one to maybe like uh, that sort of color. So now when we tap around, you'll see, oh, that's a little bit strange. Let's change that. Yeah, that works better, but yeah. Uh, you can tap around now. You can add as many cameras as you like, as many textures as you like. You could do this for the uh, frame as well. So if you wanted a different frame for each uh, each tap, then you could do it that way. But this is pretty much the entire effect. I'll switch back over to the FaceTime camera now. Uh, as you can see, different hoodie, different day. This video, like all the others, took a long time to film because my computer does not like Spark AR. Uh, but I think this is really cool. If I walk you through it just quickly, everything that we've done, what we've got here are two canvases with uh, individual setups here for cameras and frames. The frames are optional, but they're downloadable and from the link in the description if you're interested. Uh, what we've got here is a, roll, a rolling carousel effect, which appears as though it's scrolling infinitely, but in fact, it's just two cameras moving left to right and then looping and looping and looping or moving up and down and just looping and looping and looping. And then what we've done is added a color cycle patch for the frame to create this random color effect and then a duotone patch just to give it a little bit of something, a little bit of pizzazz on top of that. I hope you found this video useful. Uh, it's kind of stressful for me to make these videos now. My old laptop worked a lot better with Spark AR and this one struggles, especially when I switch over to the FaceTime camera like now, you might notice a little bit of lag. That's why I've been using the template uh, characters that you get with the Spark AR program. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this. If you found it useful, don't forget to leave a like, leave a comment. I really appreciate it. Uh, it means a lot. I'm really glad that the channel's grown so fast and that people find this, this stuff helpful. Uh, let me know in the comments what you want to see next time. I've got a lot of ideas. Uh, but yeah, I'm lagging out now, so I'm going to say my goodbyes. Uh, thank you for watching. Appreciate you, and I'll see you next time. Peace.